Hey everybody, this is Rido and we're back to Hearthstone. So, I think we probably are going to go two recordings this time. Five days left in the July season. Interesting point, since we have made no progress whatsoever as far as... Alright, we're going to play as Warlock as far as getting up ranked. We don't have anybody, any new friend requests. So, Warlock, Warlock, Warlock is, I guess, what we're going to stand Let, Let's see, what's, what are we at at Wild, what are we at at Standard? They're both at 20. Warlock, Standard. So, five days in theory to get the two rank 18 to make that goal. And it's, well just, done. it's just not going to happen. Undoing. Speaking of which, in two days, they're going to make Your some small announcement. Uh, or oh, I don't know if it's a small announcement or a huge announcement, but they're going to make some sort of announcement that uh, about Hearthstone. So I'll probably end up doing an announcement video for whatever they announce. And it's probably just an announcement of the new expansion. Greetings. Things. Uh, I greet you. Why so, more work on Hearthstone will have to be done there. It is also roughly, according to my Oops. bad records, two years now that I've been playing Hearthstone. And in two years of playing it, what have we. how far have we really gotten? Deal 9 damage split between all characters. So I'm gonna just draw a card and do this. As you command. Uh, so we haven't gotten the full classic collection. In that time they've introduced like two expansions that have now been banned. They're going to by the end of this year introduce another expansion that's that's uh, coming out plus there will be expansions that get banned too mm. just gonna leave that where it is I think it's time to renounce darkness or should I split the damage probably should split the damage how many fingers do you see uh, They've introduced the standard wild thing that's really upset me. I mean, you can't really say anything else to that fact other than it's just become this horrible change to the game. Oh, and I can't that attack with that guy. A turn to get that ready. sucks. So we'll play that. Why do you fall? So a lot of things have changed in Hearthstone, and we really haven't made a huge amount of progress. Ideally, what I would have thought I would would have wanted in two years in, even, even knowing that I probably shouldn't have played any game for two years straight. I've, I've probably been playing Time Clickers for uh, for a year straight at this point, but that's kind of very deceptive too because. It's it's in a very weird fashion that I've been playing that. Uh, I'm in the fact that I'm not really playing that much. Let's see, deal one damage. Give a friendly beast. That's a beast. So if I play this and then this. And then attack in the turn. Yeah, I would have wanted two years in to have all the cards that were possible to play still be playable. I would have liked for them to have had some crazier things in their game. 
uh, there's still quite a uh, quite a bit of items and things. Ah, uh, see, this guy comes back. So I have to kill this guy. No problem there. In the turn. This is a nice combination of cards. <laughs> it is quite the nice combination of cards, actually. Uh, just the last things I would have, I would have wished, had been improved upon. Let's see, let's go ahead and play this. Let's see what happens. Nope, nothing. Fine, we'll play this. We'll do this. And we'll end the turn. Oddly, it looks like I might win this. So, yeah. I think that's probably everything that has happened in the past three days of Hearthstone. Uh, we still, I think, are in the week in which I could use Proof that, but maybe not. Today, today is Monday, so probably not. Uh, dark trap. No charge. This guy out. What do I want to do? Do I want to kill these two characters, or do I want to? Yeah, let's do that. That works. Hmm. The dart trap will do five damage to a random enemy. Hmm. This. We'll do this. this like that. Not turn. so I'm hoping he tries to heal himself first and he oh well I bleed for the food just a pinch of it If you have a beast, summon a random beast. The sure. Beasts obey me. I didn't even turn to one damage to everybody else, so let's go ahead and get rid of that guy. That guy. That guy. Do that. And in the turn. Charging up his Cthulhu, that could be the end of me, if I'm not careful. So let's see, what else is there talk? Uh, the head of Sony goes to Iron Galaxies, which Iron Galaxies made Dive Kick and a couple of other games, and it's not really a big issue, again. Uh, they released a Titan X last week that I forgot to talk about, which just keeps on pushing up the, the level of crazy uh, as far as just how many expensive NVIDIA video cards they seem to want to have. This is going to be a mistake. I need to kill this character so he doesn't activate his trap. This... Well, actually, it probably would have been just as well to allow him to activate his trap. Kill that one. That was a mistake. Let's 
Let's just leave this character alive. I don't know. We Happy Few is out in beta now, public beta, and people don't like it. People say it has a lot of problems. And one person in particular doesn't really like it. And that is Jim Sterling, who I talk about him a lot. He is. I need to follow more people so I'm just not always talking about the same video game reviewers. But I mean, I, I imagine I'd probably end up talking about him a lot anyways. Because he's just that type of personality. Trigger somebody's death rattle. Whenever you summon a. Draw a card. Whenever a friendly beast dies. <laughs> Let's see. Let's play this. And this. And let's do this. If only this guy was a beast instead of a demon. I could use his ability like crazy. So, yeah, Jim Sterling worked with them. Has a voice of a character that's gonna be in the game, although it's not in the public beta section. And he doesn't like it. And this opens, and getting away from him for a second, it just opens a, a very interesting way of thinking for me. A new pattern of thought, as I've lost here. Let's try Warlock Wild and see what that feels like. Uh, the you as a personality as celebrity as much as any video game reviewer on YouTube may be put your name on this and you, all you really have maybe in any situation is your name maybe I mean arguably but it is certainly a big thing. Your, your appearance, whether you give something a thumbs up, whether you work with something, it should stand for some level of quality. Whether, even if that level of quality is that you're Adam Sandler and you do stupid, dumb movies that, that aren't really funny to most people, at least Adam Sandler's name stands for that. In the same way that a uh, Jet Li movie stands for fighting uh, and and all of that is your name stands for that. whatever it is and you're a critic too so as a critic I would assume your name should only stand as I'm a critic and I give unbiased reviews and even with Jim Sterling giving a negative first impression of the game his, his, <laughs> he, he still probably is going to be looked upon as being biased you kind of have to he worked with the company he's been talking about this game quite a lot in pre-alpha and all that he kind of has gotten quiet about it lately but a few months ago he was talking about it a lot the, the problem with We Happy Few, if I was just to guess, is it's not really a good game. It's a general Minecraft style clone with more of a fighting element, trying to put in some stuff like Bioshock, and it kind of feels more like Bioshock Infinite, which I recently watched a speedrun for, and in watching that speedrun of Bioshock Infinite, it's just kind of amazing how big of a mess the dot the story is in Bioshock Infinite. Not even the dimensional stuff, just the fact that it's like at one point you're fighting crow creatures that don't really make any sense. It never really makes sense why a floating city on the sky that's based on like really puritanical and racist uh, values somehow developed vigors that would give you magical powers or why you would need that in that reality uh, 
None of that gets really explained. Two, two damage to two random enemies. Sure, why not? And then this. And then this. At one point in Bioshock Infinite, you're fighting the ghost of the mother, just out of the blue. Uh, at one point, you're fighting uh, robotic statues, which don't really have any reason for existing either. The only way you can even make any sense for half of the things that occur in Bioshock Infinite is that there's just the main bad guy is stealing technology from different dimensions. It, it, so it, it's a mess of a game in story. It's kind of a mess of a game in gameplay also. Uh, but I'm not here right now to... Uh, let's see. What is this? This would cost a totem. Deal two damage to two enemies. Unfortunately, I can't do that. So, let's go ahead and just play this and then lock our crystals. So yeah, that that whole thing is, uh, yeah, Bioshock Infinite's a mess and. Frankly, We Happy Few is a mess too. If you didn't have that crazy British thing, Jim Sterling is British and I think he may have fallen in love with it for that reason, partially too. If it was just a standard the game without the, the story that they're trying to implant on it, which the story really isn't that much because at the end of the day, it still is a procedurally generated game, and that was his main problem, is that he literally could not go forward in the story because he, the random generator of elements simply didn't give him what he needed. Let's go and kill that. I can do this all day. Let's go and kill this guy, too. That's perfect. Uh, honestly, for me, the game's never looked super fun. It, it's just running around houses, collecting things, and uh, it feels like it has the elements of playing something like Skyrim, except for in a really, really small world and without any of the good story writing of Skyrim and without any of the real fighting mechanics of Skyrim either. Here, let's see, Death Rattle draws a card. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. But to get back to my original conversation, it's like, what does that do to you as a critic when you put your name on something? PewDiePie has a video game, it's probably bad. I think Angry Joe has a video game, it's probably bad. Captain Sparkles has a video game, it's probably bad. I mean, over and over and over again, I could probably say the same thing, and it's just gonna be the same response. Let's see. Give you minions plus two plus two, that would be eight plus. 7 would be 15 plus this. Well, let's just do it since I have so much man. So much things anyway. Uh, I have a real hard time right now as a poor, struggling YouTube video game reviewer. I have a hard time thinking it's a good idea for us. For video game reviews to get involved at all. It's the same thing as what I think is wrong with the big video game reviewers like Giant Bomb and 
Kotaku and all of them, I think they're all way, way too close to the video game industry. And how can you be any closer to the video game industry than when they give you jobs? When they literally pay you. I mean, and how, at certain points, is a job not kind of a bribe? Hidden? Think about that. It probably is just a bribe hidden. Like, when you, when you give your nephew a, a good paying job where he has no real responsibility, that's just nepotism and bribery. If you give a video game reviewer a voice acting gig and play, pay them just the standard rate, it's still probably a bribe because video game reviewers aren't voice actors. They don't have that skill. That they may have some overlapping skills, sure, but they took a job away from a real professional that just does that one thing to kind of bribe the video game reviewer. And then Jim Sterling, in this case, has to come back and say, well, I worked on this game and I didn't see the final product and I didn't have creative control so it's actually bad yeah my name is gonna forever be attached to it and almost certainly in some ad copy it's gonna say featuring the voice of Jim Sterling and we happy well for you unless they can sell it on something better which they very well may not be able to shall be mine. Um, it's like you kinda sold your soul there they kinda sold their soul uh, yeah, I don't know how you think of it's anything different than that. You shouldn't have worked for it. I, if somebody comes up to me, uh, they're going to probably give me some very tempting offers to... This would have to be in some fictional future where, where I was very popular and had lots of viewers, but in that fictional future, it would be very tempting. They may put... Put a bunch of zeros on the check and go, we can add more zeros if that's not enough. And it'd be very tempting to say, come, come work at this, on this game. Or l allow us to use your name to make a game. Very, very tempting. But it can't happen. It just can't. You're selling your soul. You're selling your brand. Once you lose control of your brand, you've lost everything you're about. Uh, that's kind of the funny thing about the Fine Brothers and their their insane scheme of licensing out the React channels. It's like, if that had gone through, it still wouldn't have probably worked because there would have been people out there reacting just awful, unacceptable videos and and then tying it back to the Fine Brothers and then they would have lost control of what what their react series lost now either way in a lot of ways i i refuse to watch any of the their shows anymore so they they lost me as a viewer but, but <laughs> that being said youtube still suggests it to me like non-stop i wish there was some way in YouTube to just say, look, I just don't want to see these guys quit quit suggesting it to me. I know I watched a bunch of their videos in the past, but I'm not now. Oddly, YouTube also likes to suggest that I watch videos over and over again, and like, well, I don't do too much of that. Really. Alright, four, which would give me six. This is going to work out rather well. Uh, something else on that point that I wanted to discuss, but I don't remember it. Hmm. That's a shame. Well, I don't even remember what I was talking about. It's so easy to forget. So easy to be distracted. Right now I'm still playing Lego Jurassic World. The game really is dropping the ball in some crashiness in the overworld. It's, it's really weird. You get through the whole main story. Sure the story is short. Sure they don't do very good justice 
to the Jurassic Park itself <laughs> as a concept. Uh, just because... Let's see, let's go ahead and kill this guy. And then just hope for any save save that he's gone. Hmm. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a card too. Um, so, like, Jurassic Park as a game, and there should have been one out there. It's kind of weird that the two Jurassic Park games I, I know exist, and I'm not sure there are any, are the TT Games Lego version and the Telltale Games awful version. And nobody could make a good game out of that. It should just be a huge open world that doesn't even really need to have that much uh, as far as buildings or landscape because you can just fill it with dinosaurs. That's all you really Soon. need to do. I'm gonna put this here. Attack with this. Actually, I should have attacked with this one. Because uh, I could then have attacked with this. And then attack with this. And see, I would have liked to been able to play this between these two. We've got some discard random cards here. Mm, you're in trouble now. Let's hit this. Hit this. Almost and hit this. So Welcome I probably to... will finish up Jurassic World well, Jurassic World time. pretty soon here. I just need to kind of run through everything in free play. Uh, so it's potentially 18, 18, 30 minute episodes, so 9 hours, potentially I could do it in a day and a half, and then I'll move on to the next game. I still feel like I'm really far behind. And I have this weird point I need to also be in, in that, let's see. For As the master wishes. The oh, what is it? You're in trouble now. What am I what am I trying to there, there are for the ninth month two games that I'm gonna have to report very quickly if I'm gonna do it. So that's the remaster and update of, let's go one more, even though we that's going to push us a little bit over the 30 minute mark. Uh, there's the remaster of Resident Evil 4 and the remaster of Bioshock 1. So upgraded patches on both. I don't think they're going to be super improved either way, but I need to cover both games anyways, or want to. What I actually need to is, is always up to debate. Uh, speaking of up to debate, I finally debated to upgrade my backup laptop to Windows 10 since it's it, it's like a week away from that that offer, that free upgrade being taken away theoretically. Windows, however, has Microsoft has completely failed in that effort. Lots and lots of people just refuse to get it and so they've not meet, met their goals. Speaking of not me meeting their goals, which this one is actually not even true, but uh, Nintendo's stock prices shot up with Pokemon Go, which is a huge success despite being a hugely buggy and bad game. And now Nintendo had to come out and say, well, we only are gonna make a little bit of money off that because we just licensed that thing. <laughs> we didn't really, we didn't make the game. We don't get all the profits from every single micro transactions, which by the way, for at least one day, it was making like half of all the profits from micro transactions on Apple store or something. At least that's, I heard something like that. So, so that they had to bring people back to reality and 
and tell them, you know, we're not going to, Get we're not out. gonna just out. take that profit. We we can't. It's not, it's not actually our game. We we just license it. Plus, it's a little bit odder than even that because, uh, it actually is that Nintendo owns, I think, just the majority share in the Pokemon company, an and it, this is all Japanese, like, corporate, uh, how you build a corporation, things that you don't want to hear, and I'm sure it's possible that no English-speaking person understands half of that, just like we don't understand our own laws, uh, so, like, I think they just have the controlling share of the Pokemon company, and then the Pokemon company licensed out the, the Pokemon concept to Niantic, and so it's gonna be just like a fraction of a fraction of profits, so, oh well. It would have been probably a great time to time the market, and I'm sure that's what a lot of people were doing, is a lot of people were saying, let's buy into uh, Pokemon shares, blood because it's blood. selling, it because Pokemon Go is really popular. Hoping that that would just go up and up, and I'm sure a lot of people lost their shirt in that because they bought it at its high point, and then I'm probably gonna have to then turn around and sell it at a lower point. Or, but I bet a few people actually did succeed in their goal and make uh, So. Yeah, that's a story. Pokemon Go is still a bad game. Someday it will be a good game. In a lot of ways, what the people who are playing Pokemon Go are to me as as a kind of as somebody who looks at uh, at themselves as a hardcore game, they they look to me like the people who are hipsters, or they're just getting into something, fadsters maybe, uh, they're just getting into something because it is popular, I big and, and I'm thinking to myself, it's like, well, I've been playing games forever, and oh by the way, this game is not really a video gamer style game. Walking around it sounds awful to me. It sounds like a horrible, horrible waste of time. It sounds like it would be miserable. Uh, the climate is pretty hot where I am. So, wandering outside out of the air conditioning would be miserable. Even if you were where the climate was very cold, you're still probably going to be very, very miserable in the cold months. Uh, so, with all that built in it's just like yeah that's not a game that I think real game and then people are saying they're going out to parks and they're meeting other Pokemon players and you're seeing all kinds of news reporters and, and, and things, uh, people playing it and being disruptive because they're wandering around looking at their phones it's like like Playing video games has never been really a social thing. We've tried to make it a social thing, and what you get is Xbox Live Chat or PlayStation 4 Live Chat. You get a bunch of 12-year-olds cussing at you. You get a bunch of uh, noise and stuff. Uh, that's the reality of, um, of what people are. It's kind of a, a falsity. The, Bounce into people and um, and start up friendships and have conversations. And there's probably going to be babies and marriages made off of Pokemon Go, and it's just going to be so ridiculous. That being said, I really can't hate it that much because if it encourages people that never played video games to feel more empathy to video games to get further and further away from. Video games are just all awful or stupid and that they shouldn't 
uh, they, they should be censored. And, I mean, nobody's really making that argument too much these days, but it's still potentially Today, I don't could have come to up. Uh, I, I like that they might have that good memory of Pokemon Go when somebody starts talking about video games and they might be able to understand hardcore video gamers a little bit more. I also like that it keeps normal people busy and it's making them healthier. And, uh, the, the other, the more nefarious thing is if everybody's out running around playing Pokemon Go, they're probably not going to hurt the video game industry as much as they would on average. Uh, if this takes certain game players, the people that only buy the Battlefield games or the Call of Duty games and expands their opinions a little bit so that they play different types of games or keeps them busy so they don't well, become, uh, stay as the representative style of video game uh, player that the people that EA and Ubisoft are trying to sell to. If if well, EA and Ubisoft yeah. lost their market for making Call of Duty and Battlefield games, and then they had to actually innovate and make better games with different styles of gameplay and story, that would be really nice. Although that kind of hurts the industry, but at a certain point, stagnation hurts the industry too. And so, that's certainly asking a lot from Pokemon. More than likely, none of what I've said is going to happen. What's going to happen is people are going to get bored with it, and then they're going to be done with it. And think, I think I've covered about half of the topics I wanted to talk about, so I need to go refresh my brain. And we're not making a great amount of progress as far as Warlock, because like. I can leave this, but I need to play Hunter and Mage off screen. Let's get that up to four, so next recording we get at least one done. I don't think we could get to three recordings, though. It's, there's still not that much new stuff to talk about. Anywho, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, and want and watch every second of my videos all that helps out if if you want to support me further you can click on my name righto on the right is a blue button that says support this channel click it make a donation and if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below thank you for watching have a good evening